and which has nothing to do with ladders or hoses. Now, in the middle of a life-threatening emergency, even victims who can't hear will be able to communicate with those firefighters. Channel 3's Brian Garnett has the story. What if a victim firefighters are trying to rescue from an inferno like this is deaf, unable to hear the life-saving directions the firefighter is trying to get across? Deaf people look just like the rest of us, so there's really no way of telling. And in an emergency situation, we need to be able to communicate. There, how would you sign there? Come on, come on, wake up, wake up. So communicating without their voices for people who cannot hear them is what city firefighters are listening to. One of the few programs of its kind in the country. Focus is basically gestures, not necessarily spelling with our fingers or specific sign language skills. They are obvious, simple gestures up and down in what could be a critical need to be understood. Me. Look at me. It's estimated there are between 1,200 and 1,500 deaf and hearing impaired people in Hartford. But it's also hoped this sign language training will come in handy anytime anyone has trouble understanding in the frightening panic of a fire. One of the instructors, Lou Volpentesta, deaf since birth, a teacher at the American School for the Deaf. I have seen a lot of frustrating situations in communication all through my life, not only fires, but other situations. It is good to emphasize communication of this nature with basic vocabulary. Firefighters say the benefit of the sign language will be in the first moments they arrive at a burning building. We wouldn't know how to communicate it with them. Um, basically, you could be trying to tell us someone else was in the building. Or... Among the most important lesson for the firefighters, don't drag a deaf person from the fire by both hands, or you'll take away his ability to communicate with you. Brian Garnett, Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Hartford. The Hartford Fire Department, meanwhile, is encouraging city residents with any disability to register at their local firehouse so firefighters can be prepared in an emergency. And they save lives without saying a word. And Susan Smith said, Hartford firefighters are the first in the state to learn sign language. It can be life-saving knowledge, and Captain Charles Keel speaks from experience. It was just off of Farmington Avenue on Owen Street. We had a fire, and... There were people there that were blind and also deaf, and we did come to realize that it was substantially difficult. Having a conversation with someone that, well, if you don't know sign language and they're deaf, it's very challenging. Two classes a day are being held at the fire department's training center, and the teachers from the American School for the Deaf give their students high marks. They did an outstanding job, and we we're very impressed, and we hope that it benefits them, and we sure it will. The firefighters are learning common gestures that will help them work with deaf people in all kinds of emergency situations. An explosion and fire in Hartford at the trash to energy plant in the city's South Meadows this morning. Luckily, no one was hurt when something blew up in the shredder room. The plant which burns trash, converting it to electricity, has had explosions in the past when propane tanks sneak through. But this blast was bigger than usual. The people please when they say don't put poison, don't put hazardous materials in the garbage, don't try to sneak it in. Go through the property authority. 5 a.m. in a three-story apartment building on Jefferson Street. We're told firefighters were able to contain the flames to just the first floor. apartment building on Jefferson Street. We're told the firefighters were able to contain the flames to just the first floor. Two people have been taken to the hospital, one of them with serious injuries. We'll keep you updated on this story. An inside Bickford... For a new car. That's why you can count on your Connecticut.